What's going on guys? Waco from Grail Watch and I'm here with my buddy Nicholas Rudez. How are you sir? I'm very well, thank yes. you. Great to see you again. Welcome at Watch it, and. it is my pleasure. So for those of you who don't know Nicholas, he is the uh, leader here at Watchland and um, one of the greatest guys that I know and also an extraordinary chef. And we had uh, together one of the most amazing fondues I've ever had in my life, thanks to Nicholas. Well, thank you very much. It was a great pleasure to have you in my house uh, yesterday for this uh, wonderful fondue. And we were talking about the spoon, and I told you how important it is to stir the fondue always in the same shape, and that's during the eight shape. Yes. I, I, this is the interesting thing was like I tried to make fondue in my house before um, and something was always a little bit missing and it was only when I was uh, watching Nicholas and he said you know actually you have to use a very special spoon a spoon with a hole correct it's all in the spoon or a lot of it is in the spoon so for your next fondue in Singapore <laughs> I would like to offer you this uh, uh, holy grail of spoons <laughs> for your fondue. <laughs> that's amazing. And I love that it's got a heart in the center of it as well. Nicholas, thank you, sir. My pleasure. That's great. Pleasure. So, guys, now we're going to transition from talking about cheese, which is clearly one of my favorite subjects, you know, uh, <laughs> to <Your> second. My, <laughs> my second favorite subject, to my, my absolute favorite subject, which is watches and what a watch we have to discuss today. When I think of iconic watches, you know, Frank Mueller has created so many of these, right? And there's a period in the 1990s where you see such design richness combined with amazing complications. You know, tell me about this period for you, Nicholas. Well, it was a unique period for Frank Miller, and uh, Frank was uh, producing complications and designs that were not seen uh, at all on the market. So it was an incredible time, and uh, Frank was uh, very creative, very bold, and pushing the uh, uh, bounders of uh, watchmaking to the limit, and it was uh, fantastic. Amazing. And, and you know, um, I, I remember looking at these chronographs from the 1990s. So we're going to discuss two types of chronographs. One is a, a, a manual wine chronograph with a, with a Lemania movement that is kind of a tribute to the classic chronographs of the 1940s, right? Correct. And then the second one is also a, a pretty amazing watch as well. It's a double-sided chronograph, which means that the pinion of the chronograph hand travels all the way from the dial to the back of the watch where you find a second dial and you see that there's all these amazing scales on there as well, Correct. which is such a genius idea. Measurement tools. Absolutely. But let's talk about that first watch. So I don't know if you guys have been following sort of the vintage watch collecting world. You'll see that like the Frank Mueller chronographs from the 1990s suddenly emerged. I think it was on, I think a collected man, a Silas's site that I first saw, Silas Walton's site that I first saw it. And I was looking at this watch and I'm like, wow, it's absolutely stunning. You know, and bear in mind the context of the 90s, no one was making really chronographs, right? right. You know? um, and, and he had, uh, Frank had, uh, had seemed to be inspired by the classic chronographs of the 40s with these beautiful sort of like uh, dials that had, you know, um, applied brigade numerals to them. Uh, the case was beautiful as well, rounded with these oversized kind of dome pushers. And so um, I approached you, Nicholas, and I said, look, here's a picture of this watch. Um, I tried to buy the vintage watch, but someone bought it before me. I only recently discovered that was my friend Mark Cho. Um, I love them. I, I saw two executions, a three-counter watch with a black dial and a two-counter watch with a silver dial. And I, I approached you, Nicholas, and I said, Nicholas, would it be possible, sir, if we could kind of revive these watches and make them as a collaboration between us? Absolutely. All right. and, and it was a pleasure to go and discover our uh, stock. And we were fortunate enough to have uh, the right movements and uh, beautiful old um, dials as well. And I'm wearing one of the inspirations uh, on my hand right now. Amazing, yes. Yeah. So that's a double-sided chronograph. So, Correct. okay, the moment that, that I almost fell out of my seat was when, so we were discussing this watch in particular, and um, Nicholas was like, you know, way, like we could put a modern movement in it, we could put an automatic movement in it, but it would change the dimensions of the watch quite significantly, and make it quite thick. And this watch is actually qu relatively slim because it's got a manual line movement in there. Very slim, very elegant. Yes. And he said, let me try to see what I can find. And when he brought out these trays, of new old stock, vintage Lemania 1874 movements from the 1990s, I almost like started crying. I couldn't <laughs> believe it. It was just such an extraordinary moment. Very emotional moment. And then the idea that, you know, Nicholas, that you would, you know, allow me to use these movements, which I think are kind of a treasure trove for you in this incredible limited series of, you know, of watches. I mean, I have to say thank you for this, you know? Well, our pleasure. 
Okay. You know, and then so um, we sat down together with um, your colleague Jean Loup, who's mm -hmm. the head of design here, and we kind of went through the whole process of, of it. Now, so we didn't want to make just a facsimile of the watches that came from the past. We wanted to be deeply inspired by it, make a tribute to them, but also kind of update it for you know the the, uh, the modern customer as well. Correct. So the first thing we decided on was I think the perfect size would be between 38.5 to 39 mm, right? 39 mm. Yeah. Case, so. And so we decided 39 mm uh, would be would be, be just right. Then on top of that, we looked at the, the, the dial and the language of the dial, and we were like, you know what, we love this whole idea of the applied brigade numerals, but let's punch them up a little bit. Let's make them a little sexier. <laughs> let's increase the size of them a little bit, as well as the dot markers, uh, to create something you know even bolder and even mm -hmm. more in keeping with Frank Mueller's kind of very Latin spirit. Right? Thanks to your great taste as well. Wow, <laughs> come on. So the result is this incredible watch. I have to say, I'm absolutely blown away by it. It's just a work of extraordinary beauty. I mean, I have to say thank you, you know, uh, it's, it's... No, thank you. Yes. And we're delighted to be uh, participating with Grail Watch. Oh, thank you so much. Um, now, you know, Nicholas, not every manufacturer would actually go into its archives and create an, basically an all-new model, um, you know, which is a tribute to something that you had in the 90s. Mm -hmm. I think that's an incredible expression of Frank Mueller's um, manufacturing capacity as well. You know? Well, absolutely. We're a family-owned uh, business. We are uh, family-operated, and we have uh, a history, a long history of uh, incredible world premieres, and it's uh, fun to always um, look back on some of those uh, amazing models. Yeah, you know, and I also want to say that because we, we went to go look at the, the uh, workshop when, when they were going through the movements, and so every one of these movements, even though it's a vintage, new old stock movement from the 90s, was painstakingly torn down, clean, refinished, um, reassembled, tested to the, the maximum. So, you know, the amount of effort, it probably would have been easier to just use a new movement, you know? <laughs> but I, I really want to say thank you for that incredible gesture. I mean, it was, it was awesome of you. A pleasure, fantastic. And on the wrist, it is just stunning. It is, to me, the ultimate gentleman's uh, chronograph. It's in steel. Elegant. Yeah, and we decided to brush the case as well to give it a little bit more of a, you know, sporty elan, right? And then just some subtle, a subtle stepping on the bezel with a little bit of a polished um, a perimeter just at the top where it meets the sapphire crystal. Uh, and then the dial itself. What a master work of beauty, I have to say. And it's got the open back yes. as well. Ah, so this is really interesting as well. So the original watches were solid case back watches, right? But we're like, but the movement is so beautiful, we have to make them open case back. But then we were like, you know, the original idea that Frank had was that he wanted these watches to be amagnetic. He wanted them to be tool watches. Mm -hmm. So you can actually choose which case back you would like because we've actually supplied a second case back, which is a solid case back, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you, Thank you Nicholas. <laughs> this is so cool. So guys, uh, stay tuned. We'll be launching this soon. And um, I hope for those of you who get one, uh, you love it as much as I do. It is uh, an incredible part of watchmaking history, a huge tribute to what Frank Mueller was doing in the 90s, but continues to do today. Uh, and, and I absolutely love it, and I'm super honored, sir. Thank you. Our great pleasure. Thank you, Wei. Cheers, guys. Thank you, Grail. Mm -hmm.